Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends. And welcome back once again for another video with your host, Andrew. What we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna to be talking about a pen in here. But before we do that, I just wanna say a massive thank you to Colt Pens and a thank you to them for allowing me to actually review these products. Now, we have got some quite exciting things lined up for you over the next couple of weeks. And first off, uh, we've got the pen which is in here, which is the Laban Skeleton. So what we'll do, we will do an unboxing today and we'll get the pen unboxed and I'll provide you with timestamps so you can skip those sections. I was going to do them for a while as separate videos, but I thought, well, if I'm including timestamps, do I really need to actually do them separately? No, you can just skip them. So I'm going to go back to that and I might change my mind again down the line. I do apologise. But anyway, first off, happy birthday Colt Pens. 16 years in operation and what a wonderful, wonderful achievement. So what does that really mean for everybody else? Well, you do get 15% off if you spend over 75 pounds. If you spend over 40 pounds, you can get 10% off or you can use my actual discount code, which is penfriendsuk10 on anything from any price range. So that's entirely up to you. There is also some free goodie bags as well if you spend over 30 pounds as well. So have a look at those deals. Um, there may be something for you. And there's also some really nice inks come out from Diamine and Robert Oster in celebration. There's three, I believe, three uh, Diamine inks, which are named after new members of the Colt Pen teams. And there's also two uh, inks from Robert Oster, which celebrates the Devonshire countryside. And I think it was the sea or the sky, one of the two. Um, but they look really, really interesting. And Nick Stewart has done some wonderful, wonderful uh, ink drawings and inks explorations with those. So do go and check out their website and have a look at some of those deals. And there may be something which you'd like. Anyway, for now, let's roll the titles, get the pen unboxed, and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so the Laban Skeleton. What a pen. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the pen up here. I'm gonna give you some size dimensions. Wonderful. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a look at the contents of the box because I think the box is really nice and it really deserves actually talking about. So let's just put the box back on a moment. Excellent. So what do you get for your 140 odd pounds? Uh, the pricing hasn't actually gone up on to Colt Pen's website, but as a rough translation uh, from US dollars to pounds, it works out to about that. We get a really attractive blue box with some nice gold foil here on for the Laban and also some like nib designs here. We get on the back where it's made, uh, sorry, not where it's made, uh, we've got Laban's website, very nice. And we get a nice little orange pull tab, which then would reveal the pen inside, which you have seen from the unboxing. <clears throat> okay, inside the actual box, if we take out the pen pillow, we are presented with a few items here. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We get what would be a matching sticker. Now, Colt Pen sent out three pens in two boxes just to save on some shipping. I don't mind that whatsoever. But if you were to go and buy yourself a Laban skeleton, you would get a, an accompanying sticker also in the same trim, which I think is really nice. We get a nice little bookmark, which is made out of cardboard. Sort of looks like an imitation leather with the embossing, but that's very nice. And we also get a, uh, a warranty and user guide. Again, very, very nice. Right, so let's put all that back together and have a look at what you really came to see, and that is the pen. Okay, so the Laban Skeleton. I'm gonna try and be as non-biased as possible and just literally list the features as um, always. But we're starting from the top, I am going to refer to this as the nose cone of an aeroplane with the propeller prop. 
and I think that looks really nice. Now the pen does pick up on a few um, finger marks but and it would have been quite nice had there been a pen polishing cloth included but I could imagine that might also put up the price a little bit and it's not expensive to get a polishing cloth. Then we come on to the actual skeleton aspect of the pen and uh, which has this really nice sort of repeating pattern on the cap. Again, very functional clip. The actual pen will post into, post, will clip it into your pocket. No problems whatsoever. Then we have got Le Barn on the center ring. Very, very nice. And then we come down onto the main body, which has got a repeated pattern of the actual top, which is really um, fascinating. Um, and it's slightly more elongated due to the fact that um, it goes down a little bit further. Um, and then we come to the end finial. Uh, we also get a really nice sort of view of the nib and the ink on the inside with a clear plastic barrel. And then if we take off the actual cap, then we are presented with, I think it's actually a Schmidt number six size nib. Um, I have got the Le Barn Forest, uh, which is coming up for review um, at some stage. And I think that one's the Yovo nib, which is quite interesting that they use two different manufacturers. We then get a very comfortable section with an hourglass shape for the section. The collar just around about here just tapers up ever so slightly and it just stops your fingers slipping up. And it does provide a really nice grip. The actual um, threads are made of plastic here. And then underneath we are presented with a international cartridge converter. And quite interestingly, we have got a demonstrator on the actual um, piston turning up down at the end. Okay, so let's put the actual barrel back on. And then what we'll do is we're going to go over to a writing sample and I'll show see you in the next section. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what I've done, I've taken the microphone off so my voice might be a little bit distant, but I thought it would be quite worthwhile doing so, so that you can actually hear the actual nib actually going over the page and in the future I'm going to be doing more videos like this unless of course you guys don't really care about it. <laughs> right so what we've got here is the Le Balm. skeleton. And the paper which we're using today is the Ayush paper, which was very kindly sent out for review a few weeks ago. Now the ink, which I've got, I can't pronounce it. It comes from Hungary and Romania, but it's this red here. <laughs> I apologize uh, for this, um, but it is a very nice red. Um, also apologies for any sort of uh, misfocusing. So what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna try and focus it, there we go. It's this. Perfect. Right, okay, let's move on. So I'm not gonna write down the, the name of the ink because I can't spell it, um, not effectively. I do apologize. Now the nib, it's a number six dice nib and I'm gonna put a question mark. So it's a number six and it's steel. And what a steel nib this really is. It's really quite wonderful. And I'm going to say it is possibly a Schmidt nib, but I, it's immaterial. Now this, this is um, actually a fine nib. Okay, let's write out the quick brown forks.
Okay, and as you can see, there is a little bit of expression on some of those characters, and I really do enjoy that. As you can see on the, the D of the dog, um, we can get a little bit of pressure and actually get some really nice, quite line variation out of it. So, very nice. So, can the pen reverse right? Yes. Um, hmm. <laughs> sort of. You're getting like a extra, 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 extra fine <laughs> grade there. I don't know if that um, really does exist, but you can. You know, you can get a little bit of shading. So if you're doing a bit of arts, you could maybe get some very, very fine shading out of it. Um, okay, right, let's move on to doing some wetness. Hey, yeah, it's a wet nib. And um, being fine grade, I'd say that's pretty acceptable, to be honest. That's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to do some line variation. So I'm going to actually go from the side because of my uh, writing angle. So I'm going to do these as horizontal lines. And you can get quite a lot of uh, line variation for a steel nib out of this, which I think is very, very nice. And it's not going to set the world on fire, it's certainly not a flex nib. It's not designed to be, but you know, if you really want to get some expression on some letters, so let's just do a T. You can get a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of fun. That's not bad in my sort of viewpoint, not bad at all. Okay, so that really concludes it for the writing section. Now what we're going to do is we are going to move on to doing a size comparison and then I'll give you my final thoughts and feelings. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a Twisby Go, which I have decorated myself. And then we've got the Laban skeleton. Then we have got a Leonardo messenger in caramel. Then we've got uh, the 2020 special edition from Lamy, uh, which is a Lamy Safari uh, in the Tourmarine, I want to say. And then we've got a Sailor Pro Gear in Vega. So. It's not a large pen, you know, if we um, really sort of compare them. I'd say the Leonardo is, you know, about average size. It's uh, about the same size as a, a, a Lamy. Um, the Lamy's just a hair bit bigger. And then, of course, we've got the uh, Sailor Pro Gear here. Now, if we uncap these, this is where things will get a little bit interesting. So let's just get these uncapped very quickly. Okay, so let's just get those lined up. One day I will get myself a pen tray to do this in. But for now, this is what we have. So we've got, again, all the pens lined up. And as you can see, the actual pen is quite a bit smaller than the rest here. It's not too different, actually. If we put pens side by side, it's a bit bigger than the actual Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Um, and it is considerably smaller than that of the Leonardo. But still, it is a beautiful, beautiful pen and one which is very comfortable in all size hands. So that's the size comparison. Now let's move on to my final thoughts. Right, ladies and gentlemen, so the Laban Skeleton. Ooh, what a pen indeed. Now what we will do is we are going to just go over some of the um, things which I like about it and some things which I feel could be improved. And there aren't really that many things which could be improved, to be honest. So I really love this sort of nose cone and propeller prop. It's a bit of an alliteration, huh, long day at work. Still can get words out, so I'm quite proud of myself on that. Um, I really love the skeleton overlay. It's really, really stylish, and it's just something really unique, and it's not something which you really see in this price point, which does lead me on to the price of this pen. It's 140 pounds-ish in the UK. Now you can of course get some discount off at the moment uh, with my discount code, or you can use um, the Cult Pens one, which is will get you um, about 15% off, so even, an even better saving. But either way, 
this pen is really, really reasonably priced considering what you actually get for your money. The writing experience is smooth. The nib is great. It's got a little bit of bounce to it. You can see your ink levels in here as well, which is great. And there's so much um, charming aspects to the actual design of it, the organic sort of structure of the actual elements on the overlay. And it's just a, a wonderful conversation starter. Now, of course, there are gonna be things which could be better, of course. So whilst I have actually got the pen capped, or the cap on the pen, you'll notice that the actual nib aligns to the side, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I do wish perhaps it had aligned with either the clip um, facing forwards or maybe going backwards either way, but to the side, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. I like the fact that also, actually, whilst I am um, talking about this uh, cap, I like the fact that the actual clip does actually align with um, the Laban. I think that's great. Um, but let's now go on to some little points of contention. So whilst the actual grip is comfortable um, for shorter um, writing experiences, um, I have noticed after doing about a page of A4 writing, it does get a little bit slippery, which is a bit of a shame. Now, some people really absolutely love metal pens and that might be something which won't bother them. So if that is the case, then ignore that. But that's one thing which I think has been quite well documented and some things which have been mentioned on the Fountain Pen UK Facebook group as well as some friends. Whilst this actual cartridge converter goes a long way in terms of trying to hide the, the, what would usually be a black plastic end by putting on a transparent section here, it would have been nice had it been perhaps a Japanese eyedropper pen. Just could you imagine the ink uh, capacity you would get in here? Um, maybe, you know, offer something like an eyedropper version of this pen, or even just change the metal thread assembly on the inside, just to give you the opportunity to be able to um, eyedrop the pen. I think that would be onto a, a big winner. And it would also make the actual skeleton overlay look really impressive if all this section was filled up with um, your color of choice. I think that would be fantastic. So that really leaves it for today. Um, I would have to say, Laban, you really are a hidden gem. You really are. Now, yes, their range is very eclectic. Uh, there is certainly some pen models out there which are less desirable than others. And there are some which are even more desirable than this. So there really is a pen for everyone. And I, I think that is really refreshing. Uh, you do get companies which do concentrate on say like two or three different uh, type of body shapes. And then they'll just alter the trim on here. But Le Bon seem to have like about six or seven or eight or nine different term pen shapes. And they're all unique and they're all wonderful in their own little ways. And I think it's kind of refreshing in a day and age where you do get like this sort of uh, copy paste sort of routine. This year we're going to release a new pen and it's gonna be in a new color, but it's the same shape. And that's fine, you know, people do like to collect pens in that, no problems. But when you do get a company coming along and say, hey, we're gonna release a new model and it's a new shape, Something a bit special, to be honest. And the actual quality of the machining on here really is quite fantastic. You know, there's no sharp edges. It's really well, highly polished. And I think everyone would enjoy this pen. I, I just really think it's a, a wonderful, wonderful pen, especially for the price. Now that does bring it to the end of today's video. Uh, before I do go, I would like to say that we have got um, another two Le Bon pens coming up, for coming up for a review soon, but uh, just like a choose your own adventure book, you get to choose your review. So what would you like to see? Would you like to see the Antique or the Le Bon Forest 325? Sorry, the Le Bon 325 Forest, I should say. Um, both of those can be reviewed next, um, but one of them will only be reviewed. I think that makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've had a long day. But anyway, please do choose um, which you would like to see uh, reviewed next. Uh, you can comment in the section below or you can uh, comment on the upcoming uh, community poll here on YouTube. So go and check that out and then choose what you'd like to see reviewed next. And we've also got some inks up here from Hungary and Romania, which you saw um, in the review. And I'm gonna have to get someone to translate the actual um, names of those because I can't and they're too hard for me to say, especially on a, a Wednesday afternoon. It's a hump day and I really want a glass of wine. So I think I might go and enjoy one and I shall see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now.